Hello and welcome back to the CNS Pharmacology Masterclass where we talk about all the medications that work on the central nervous system. And here we will explain the pharmacology of the buspirone. So let's start with an overview. So the buspirone is the scientific name of the medication and a famous trade name for it is the Buspar and this is how the packaging of the Buspar looks like. The Buspirone is a selective anxiolytic drug meaning it works only to relieve anxiety and that is why it is mainly used in treatment of anxiety disorders and the Buspirone is included in as a pyrone drug class the azapyrones are a collection of anxiolytics, antidepressants, and antipsychotic drugs, and the buspirone is one of them. So in comparison with the other anxiolytics, like the benzodiazepines, the buspirone has a different mechanism of action and a lower side effect profile that will be discussed later in this video. And the buspirone was first synthesized in the 1968. Now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of the buspirone. So the buspirone is available as oral formulas only. And the absorption of the oral formula is rapid, but the bioavailability is only 4%. That is because there is extensive first pass metabolism that occurs. So when the buspirone gets absorbed into the intestine and out into the blood, then it goes into the portal vein where it goes to the liver. In the first pass metabolism, 96% of the buspirone dose will be gone and 4% only what is going to go into the systemic circulation where it has its effects. The bioavailability of the buspirone gets better if the drug is taken with food. Regarding distribution, the buspirone is highly protein bound by 86% and the rest will distribute to the most of the body tissues including the central nervous system where it has its action. The buspirone is metabolized primarily by oxidation by the cytochrome B450 enzymes in the liver, especially the CYP3A4 enzyme, and one of the metabolites is an active metabolite. And buspirone getting metabolized by the CYP enzymes means it is liable to be affected by other drugs that induce or inhibit the CYP enzymes. Meaning, when the patient is taking another medication at the same time with the buspirone and that medication is inducing the CYP, this will lead to lower plasma concentrations of the buspirone. And if the patient is taking a CYP inhibitory medication, this will lead to higher buspirone plasma levels. And excretion of the buspirone is through urine by 60% and through the bile also by 40%. And the elimination half-life is around three hours. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action. So the buspirone an anxiolytic effect is not related to GABA, unlike the other anxiolytics like the benzodiazepines. Because remember, the benzodiazepines, the barbiturates, and the Z drugs all work on the GABA to reach their effects, while the buspirone doesn't work on that. It actually works on the serotonin receptor. It works as a partial agonist on the serotonin receptors like the 5-HT1A and the 5-HT2. 
and it also works as a weak antagonist on the dopamine D2 receptors. Now activating the serotonin receptors by the buspirone lead to increased the serotonergic activity in the amygdala and other parts of the brain leading to the relief of the anxiety. We also mentioned that the buspirone has a weak antagonism of the dopamine D2 receptors. This will lead to attenuation of the side effects of the Parkinson's disease therapy. So if the Parkinson's disease patient is taking buspirone in addition to their Parkinson's medications, buspirone will attenuate the side effects of the Parkinson's medications in that patient. Now let's talk about the pharmacologic effects of the buspirone. So we mentioned that it has a selective anxiolytic effects, so it only works to relieve anxiety by activating the serotonin receptors. It doesn't lead to sedative, hypnotic, or euphoric effects, unlike the benzodiazepines. Because the benzodiazepines work on the GABA, so they lead to the hypnotic, the sedative, and the euphoric effects, while the buspirone doesn't work on GABA, it works on the serotonin, that is why it has anxiolytic effects only. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses, starting with the FDA-approved therapeutic uses of the buspirone. So we mentioned that it is used in treatment of anxiety disorders. For example, it is used as a second line in treatment of generalized anxiety disorder. And it is a second line after the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which are the first line. And there is no risk for dependence or tolerance with the buspirone, and that make it better than the benzodiazepines and barbiturates for treatment of anxiety. And the anxiolytic action of the buspirone may take three to four weeks in order to reach the full clinical effect, making the drug unsuitable for management of acute anxiety. Now let's talk about the off-label therapeutic uses, which include the treatment of depression and in treatment of hypoactive sexual desire disorder in women. Now let's talk about the adverse effects of the puspirone. So it may lead to central nervous system side effects, which include the abnormal dreams, ataxia, confusion, drowsiness, headache, paresthesia, and it may lead rarely to akathasia. It also may lead to blurred vision, tinnitus, and it may lead to chest pain. It also may lead to nausea or diarrhea, and it may lead to pain and weakness, and finally, it may lead to elevated liver enzymes. And as we mentioned before, there is no liability for tolerance or drug dependence with the buspirone unlike the benzodiazepines. And the buspirone may lead to serotonin syndrome. It's a possible adverse effect because the buspirone increases the serotonin levels and serotonin syndrome is much more possible if the buspirone is combined with other medications that increase the serotonin in the brain, like the monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Now, what is exactly the serotonin syndrome? So it is a set of symptoms that occur with the use of the puspiron and other serotonergic drugs due to increased serotonin levels in the CNS. Symptoms of the serotonin syndrome include increased blood pressure, tachycardia, fever, agitation, hyperreflexia, tremor, sweating, midriasis, and diarrhea. And those symptoms range from mild 
to severe and complications include seizures and rhabdomyolysis. Regarding the contraindications of the buspirone, they include history of hypersensitivity reactions to the medication, and also it is contraindicated to combine the buspirone with the monoamine oxidase inhibitors or other drugs that inhibit the monoamine oxidase, for example, the linozolid, because of the risk of the serotonin syndrome, as we mentioned. Finally, let's talk about the toxicity. So, buspirone overdose or toxicity is rare. The patient present with nausea, vomiting, dizziness, meiosis, and gastric distress, and the management is according to symptoms, so symptomatic management. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like this video and comment your ideas and questions. And please check out my CNS Pharmacology Masterclass. It will appear on your screen right now. And also I have a lot of pharmacology content that you can check out by clicking on my channel.